Calling all cars. A copyrighted program created by Rio Grande. Los Angeles Police calling all cars. Attention all cars. Broadcast 240. At Beechwood and Sunset. To see the officer. That's all. Rolls and clerks. days hence, and we shall celebrate the 162nd anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence. And you know, friends, one of the sanest ways to observe the Fourth is to visit some section of this great country of ours that you've never seen before. Three forms of accidents can mar the happiness of the day. One of these can be avoided by careful driving, another by careful use of fireworks, and the other by giving your motor the protection it needs with sturdy, real lube motor oil. This great lubricant is manufactured in the country's largest refinery and so made that it cannot break down under the pressure of blistering hot weather. Friends, if you've been experimenting with wishy-washy oil to let your motor down as the least provocation, declare your independence right now and before you set out on any trip, roll into the red and white Rio Grande station in your neighborhood and declare your allegiance to Rio Lube, the newest and finest motor oil in the West. The story we are here tonight has been taken from the files of the Los Angeles Police Department. We have therefore asked Chief of Police James D. Davis to open our program. Chief Davis. If all the people who come to Hollywood to break into the movies wouldn't, there'd be a lot more happiness all around. It has always been a mystery to me how anyone in his right mind will allow himself to be sold so completely by a spurious producer that he will part with his hard-earned money in the happy hope that he will someday be a big shot in the movies. One of the most constantly recurring problems the police have to deal with is that of un some unsuspecting person letting his life savings go to some unscrupulous but smooth-tongued promoter. The case we are about to hear is one in point. Even though the criminal in this case was caught and punished, the fact remained that a lot of people would have been better off if they had stayed away from Hollywood. However, the program was waiting. I'll be with you again at the end of the show. In a little bungalow in Hollywood's movie section, a man and a woman have just finished breakfast. He reads the morning paper. Listen, Bob, before you turn to the funny paper, you'd better look under the want ads for a job. Say, who do you think I am? I can't land a job the week after we arrive in California. Well, no one expects you to, silly. But we ought to be thinking about it. $400 is all there is between us and the poorhouse. I'm not Lou Ayers. I'm Bob James. I can't crash the movies overnight. Neither can you. Well, that's what I've been saying all along. We'll have to take whatever jobs we can get until we can make the studios. Well, that's what I'm hunting for. Let me have some of the paper. Wait a minute. Here, listen to this, will you? I'm listening. Wanted. Assistant director. $45 per week salary. Small investment required. Secured and returnable. Call at stage nine. Mark Reese Studios. Sunset Boulevard in Beechwood. Assistant director? Gee, that's too good to be true. Well, if you could only land something like that, we'd be all well, set. Don't forget there'll be a hundred others after it. And we don't know what they call a small investment in the movies. Well, I know it, but there's no harm in looking into it. And we'd better get busy on it right away before the rush starts. Well, I'll get ready and go right out there now. Hey, what do you tell them if they ask you if you've ever had any experience as a director? I'll leave it to me, kid. I'll bluff my way through somehow. <laughs> yes, that's how you got me. Huh? Well, you can tell them you've played stock all through the Middle West and still be telling the truth. Don't forget, I helped direct some of those shows. Besides, they don't want a guy who's had too much experience, or he'd be running the works. They want an assistant director. Mm, yeah, that's right. And once you get in, you can pull wires and get me in the picture. Honey, you talk like I had that job. But one thing's sure, it's only in Hollywood one had stumbled on an ad like this. Or an opportunity like this. After all, that's what we came here for. And so did a thousand of others. Well, I've, had, I've got a hunch you're going to be the one that's chosen. Oh, cut out the pep talk. And you get shaved and go right over there now, will you? Good morning. Is Mr. Becker in? Oh, good morning, Mr. James. You are Mr. James, aren't you? Yes, I, I phoned for an appointment just a little while ago. Mr. Becker's expecting me. Oh, yes, I, I know. Uh, he wasn't expecting you so soon, though. Is he here? 
Yes, but he's in conference right now. Won't you wait? Uh, yes, if you don't mind. Mr. Becker's a very busy man. So it seems. Yes, sir? Oh, yes, Mr. Becker. Is a gentleman waiting to see you? Yes, Mr. James. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, Mr. James, Mr. Becker will see you now. First door to the right. Thanks. You've got a lot of trick locks around this place. Oh, yes, we have to be careful. Come right in, Mr. James. Come right in. I'm awfully glad you could come over. Oh, excuse me a moment, will you? Certainly. Miss Harmon, get me Mr. Fairbank, will you? Yes, at his home. He'll find the number in my private file out there. Yes, thank you. Now, Mr. James, what can I do for you? Well, I, I saw your ad in the paper this morning, so I phoned your secretary for an appointment. And, well, here I am. Mm-hmm. So you think you'd like to be an assistant director, do you? You know anything about the moving picture business? Well, no, sir. That's I... fine, fine. And I can train you just the way I want. I'm looking for a man who can start in here at the mud salary at first and learn the business from the ground up. Here, have a cigar. Thank you. You uh, say you've had no experience in pictures? Hmm? No, sir. Most of my work's been in stock in the Middle West. Mm-hmm. And how long have you been in California? Well, just a couple of weeks. I thought I might as well join the mob. Mm-hmm. <laughs> nothing ventured, nothing gained. You know how it is. Yes? Oh, fine, fine. Put him on. Very bad. Hello, Doc. How's the boy? That's good. Oh, how's Mary? Fine. Oh, Doug, I called about the release of Around the World in 80 Minutes. I'm afraid we can't handle it on the basis we discussed. No. No, I don't feel that 500000 is enough to guarantee us a profit. Now, if we could make a deal whereby we could get, uh, ooh, say 100000 cash and release the picture on a 50-50 basis, yes, then maybe we could get together. That is, providing we can shoot some additional scenes to improve the continuity of the picture. Yeah. Oh, Doug, I'll tell you what. Suppose we talk this over at lunch, eh? Say, uh, one o'clock at the Derby? <laughs> Swell, I'll see you there. Oh, Doug, tell Mary hello for me, will you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Goodbye. Fine fellow, Doug Fairbank. You know him that well? Why, sure. I've known him for years. Used to be his business manager, then I took over production for it. Gee. Oh, he's just one of many, one of many. Take Jack Barron, for instance. Why, he couldn't get the first base till I took him over. I made him the star he is today. Is that so? Yes, sir. He came out here from a little town in the Middle West. He was broke, didn't know a soul in Hollywood. That was ten years ago. Now look at it. It's really on top, all right. I gave him his start, gave him his first break. It's all and who you know out here, my boy. What you can do doesn't make much difference if you can't get a chance to prove it, you know. Gee, I didn't realize I was going to get to see a real big shot in the movies when I came in here. Ah, uh, yes. But Jeanette Gaynor's my real find. That girl had never seen the camera until I put her in front of one. Oh, what do you know about that? From the looks of all these pictures, she isn't the only one. No, not by a long shot. But I have a soft spot in my heart for Jeanette. Oh, by the way, she's coming in to see me this morning. I guess I'll stick around. <laughs> yes, I would too, are you? Oh, you uh, might be interested in reading some of the autographs on these pictures. Well, that's what I've been doing. Here, why don't you read this one? All that I am and hope to be, I owe to my best friend and pal, Jack Becker. Good luck always, Jack Barron. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I wouldn't take a million dollars for that one. I guess not. What does this one say? To the ace... Jack Becker from the Deuce, Rex Champion. That's a honey. <laughs> Just like Rex, the old son of a gun. <laughs> to my loving brother, Jack. The best brother a girl could ever have. All my love, your sister, Marion. So Marion Dixon's your sister? Where do I tell my wife? Marion's her favorite actress. Yep, Marion's my kid sister, all right. Used to see her fan mail for just one day. You know, I carried her in my arms the first time that kid was ever on a set. On the old B&E lot, that Don't was. say. She's topped now, all right. It's easy how, to figure how she got there. Yeah, she's got what it takes, too. I could spend a whole day here reading all these swell things they've written about you. <laughs> That's what everybody who comes in here says. Oh, well, <laughs> heading down to business again. We have a large studio here. We're working day and night. And we need another assistant director. I was afraid you'd engage one by this time. Well, we're not jumping at the first applicant by any means. We know what we want, and we're using this means of making our selection. Oh, yeah. So far, I haven't interviewed anyone I can conscientiously recommend for the job. Well, I'd just about give my right eye for this opportunity. I don't know that I've had all the experience you're looking for, but if I had the chance, I know I'd make good. I've always admired folks who have confidence in themselves and scorn those who are overly confident. Mr. Becker, if you'll give me this one chance, well, I could just be your right arm around here. Mm-hmm. 
Well, I'll tell you what I'll do, Mr. James. You impress me very favorably. You come back after lunch uh, with the uh, $200, and we'll go into the details. And if everything's mutually satisfactory, we might be able to get together on this. Hmm? I don't know what to say, Mr. Becker. That's all right, son. That's all right. I'll prove to you in no time that your judgment's right again. Mm -hmm. And your money will be secured and returnable after faithful performance of your contract. The uh, salary is small for a starter, but if you get going, it shoots up like a skyrocket in this business. I'll be satisfied if I can just go up. The skyrocket part can wait. <laughs> Excuse me. Yes? Oh, well, tell Mr. Navarro I'll see him in a few minutes. Some kid who thinks he's an actor wants to get into pictures, but he hasn't got what it takes. I can't be wasting my time on him. I'm glad you didn't feel that way about me. Oh, I can tell a winner when I see one, my boy. We'll go places in this racket. Racket? Uh, <laughs> we uh, always refer to the picture business as a racket, just the figure of speech, you know. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll see you this afternoon, Bobby, my boy. <laughs> Meantime, in the studio, Becker was interviewing other applicants for the job of assistant director. Now, Mr. Salazar, you come around in the morning with your money, and we'll sign the contract. And I'll really be an assistant director? Absolutely. You string along with me, my boy, and we'll go places in this racket. That's splendid, Mr. Stanley. Splendid. Five hundred will be just about right. Now, here's your contract. Just sign right there. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's it, fine. And this makes me an assistant director? Absolutely. My boy, you string along with me and we'll go places in this racket. That's fine, Miss Golden. Fine. Just sign right here. Thank you. Now, here's your receipt for $200 and your contact. We'll start shooting next Monday. I'll make you uh, an actress, Miss Golden. You just string along with me. Then followed weeks of inactivity. With the studio cluttered with assistant directors, no money for salaries, there came the inevitable dissatisfaction. At last, fully convinced that Becker meant to defraud his many assistants, one of the victims reported to the bunco squad of the police department. I'm Lieutenant Swan. I believe you've got something you think ought to be investigated. Yes, sir. I didn't want to say anything about it before, but several things have happened that make me think something's wrong. Maybe you better tell me all about the case. Well, in the first place, my husband answered an ad in one of the newspapers several weeks ago. Just what kind of an ad? Well, here it is. I kept a copy of it. Thank you. Business opportunities. Wanted assistant director. Salary. Small investment, secured and returnable. Yeah, I've heard about this one before. You have? Sure. These things are all fakes. No legitimate studio ever advertises this way. And besides, you don't have to buy a job in Hollywood or anywhere else. But my husband had to put up $200 to get his job. How much was the salary? $40 a week, I think. Has he collected it regularly? No, that's the point. That's why I thought something was wrong. He hasn't collected a cent. Mr. Becker told him that his salary would start when he started work on a picture. But they haven't started. I was supposed to work on the picture, too. Your husband hired you? No, sir. Mr. Becker did. I invested $50 myself. Does your husband know this? No. I didn't think it was a good idea to tell him. Why not? Well, I didn't want him to worry about my not working, too. And Well, Mr. Becker doesn't know we're married to each other. How long have you been waiting for this job? Well, almost a month now. I tried to see Mr. Becker last week, but he wouldn't see me. That's natural. Did you phone him? Yes, but his secretary said he was out. Yeah, that's the usual procedure. Well, you see, I was afraid to let Mr. Becker think I was mad because of what he might do to my husband. Have you had any other trouble with Becker? Well, when I went in to see him the first time, he asked me a few questions, and then he tried to get fresh, and I put him in his place, and, well, I never did get in the studio after that, though I did talk to him a time or two on the phone. Do you think there's any chance of getting my money back? About one chance in 50000 The same thing goes for your husband. Now, you take my advice and tell him all about this. And tell him to start looking for another boss. Because the one he's got is about going he's going to jail. Next morning, the Marquis Studios received an apparently prosperous but obviously suburban visitor. How do you do, ma'am? My name's Swan. 
I'd like to see the man that runs this place. You mean Mr. Becker? Well, I don't know who he is. It just says, see somebody here at this studio. What says that? Well, this here ad. I clipped it out of the paper this morning. Oh, I see. You want to be an assistant director? Oh, I don't know about that, but I am looking for a job, and anything will do. You're um, able to uh, qualify for the job? Well, I haven't had much experience, but I'm willing to learn. Now, that wasn't exactly what I meant. I meant the uh, investment part. Oh, that. Oh, sure, I can do that all right. Do you, do you think a couple of thousand would be enough? A couple of thousand? Yes, ma'am. That's all I brought with me this morning. Maybe I could raise a little more above the noon. Oh, I I think that would be quite adequate. Just sit down, will you? Mr. Becker will see you right away, anyway, I'm sure. I'll be right back. Don't go away. Oh, don't worry. I'm not easy to disturb. What's the big idea, Miss Harmon? I told you I couldn't pay your salary today. Now stop bursting in here like that. Can't you see I'm busy? It's not my salary, Mr. Becker. Well, what in blazes is it? It's a man. His name's Swan. Well, what about him? He's got money. Money? Lots of it. Two thousand dollars. Two thousand? What are you standing there for? Two thousand dollars. Get him in here. Go on. Get him in here. Quick. Two thousand dollars. Why, there ain't that much money. Come in, come in. Sit down. Have a cigar. Yes, sir. Thank you. So, you're interested in becoming an assistant director, are you, Mr. Swan? Very much so. That is, if the investment isn't too steep. Well, what would you call steep? Well, all we have in the world is $4,000. Four thousand dollars. Four thousand. You're safe, then. You're safe, as far as the investment is concerned, I mean. <laughs> We're not really interested in that. It's just a guarantee of good faith more than anything. I see. Mm-hmm. Uh, have you had any experience in pictures? Not out here in California. My work was on a stock farm back home. Oh. But there was a movie company came through there once, and they wrote a swell part for me. They did? Yeah, I was a, uh, a extra. Oh, fine, fine. And uh, how long have you been in California? Oh, just a short time. We decided to take our chances with the other 999. Well, nothing ventured, nothing gained, you know. (laughs) Now, uh, getting back to this job. We have a large studio here working day and night. We need another assistant director. And so far, I haven't interviewed anyone I can recommend for the job. Well, I'd give my right eye almost for this opportunity. I'll tell you, Mr. Swan, you impress me very favorably. Yes, very favorably. You come back after lunch with the uh, $2,000, and we'll go into the details. And we may be able to get together on this. Gosh, I, I don't know exactly what to say, Mr. Becker. I'm sort of bowled over. That's all right, my boy. That's all right. And your money is safe. It's secured and returnable in three months, provided you fulfill your end of the con- contract. Well, I'll do my best, Mr. Becker. Yes, I'm sure you will. You string along with me, my boy, and you'll go far in this racket. Racket? <laughs> just a figure of speech, my boy, just a figure of speech. We all have them out here. Oh, well, uh, when do I start to work, Mr. Becker? Why, today, right now, uh, when you paid over the 2000 Well, I'll have it for you this afternoon. <laughs> Lieutenant Swan returned to headquarters, reported to his superior officer, and arranged for a certified check for $2,000. Armed with this, he returned to the studio, where preparations had been made to impress the new assistant director. Now you all know what to do. This bird has 2,000 bucks with him, and he's got two more where that came from. If I can get my hands on that, we're all out in the open from here on in. Now, he's due here in about two minutes. So get on your toes, let him have it for all your work. You understand? Yes, okay. Yes? Okay, send him in. Here comes the sucker. Now get set. No, no, Jack. I will not do it. I will go home. But, Brett, you can't do this to me. Think of what we've done together. Think of the plans I've got for your future, Greta. Future, future. You talk of my future when my heart is breaking. No, I cannot stand this Hollywood another day. I must go home. I want my Sweden with its fjord. That's Norway, you dope. Dope? Uh, dope. That's all I hear in Hollywood. First this one takes it, then it's somebody else. I can't stand it. I thank I go home. Oh, Marlena, you do something with her. What can I do? She won't even speak to me. Every night I meet her at some nightclub, and even then she won't speak to me. That is not true, Marlena. I love you. It is only for the newspapers that we do this. Well, if you ask me, I'd say both of you is loco. Me, I long for the open range, the plain country. Oh, give me a home where 
where the antelope roam. It's buffalo, Mr. Maynard. Now, let's stop all this nonsense. <laughs> oh, how do you do, Mr. Swan? I didn't see you. Well, I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, not at all, not at all. Come right in. Come right in. Here you are. <laughs> you uh, know Miss Garbo, of course. No, I don't believe I do. How do you do? Are you alone? Alone? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, I'm alone. Good. I wish ever. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, Miss Dietrich, may I present Mr. Swan? He's my new assistant. How do you do? Uh, hiya, ma'am. He's such a nice assistant, Mr. Becker. Yes, yes. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, you've been out here long, Miss Dietrich? Well, this is Marlena Dietrich, Mr. Swan. It is? Yeah. Are you interested in pictures, too? I am pictures, Mr. Swan. Oh, you are. I see. I'm sorry. I mean, oh, that's right nice. Howdy, partner. I'm Ken Maynard. I'm glad to know you. Well, howdy. We're right glad to have you around this here ranch, partner. We've been needing some new blood around here. Just like I told Jack here. What we need on this range is some new blood. Hey, didn't I see that, Jack? That's right, Ken. That's right. You sure did. Well, I've sure seen a lot of your pictures, Mr. Maynard. That's so. Well, I've made a lot. Yes, indeed. As a matter of fact, we're going to start shooting today on a new picture of Ken. It's got music, too, Mr. Swan. We've got an exclusive contract with one of the leading acts on the radio, Jimmy and his saddle pal. Why don't we take Mr. Swan out to the ranch and let him get started with it? Why, that's a capital idea, Ken. Come on, let's all go. Morning, Mr. Becker. Good morning, Mr. Becker. Morning, Mr. Becker. Good morning, Mr. Becker. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Everything ready? Uh, yes, Mr. Becker. Yes, Mr. Becker. Yes, Mr. Becker. Yes, Mr. Becker. That's fine, that's fine. Come on, Ken, come on, let's get going. Uh, right with you, partner. Come along, Mr. Swan. Right with you, partner. The uh, sound ready? Yeah, okay. That's fine. Where are the saddle pals? Anybody seen the saddle pals? Right here, Mr. Becker. Over here, Mr. Becker. Thank you, Mr. Becker. Yeah, over here, Mr. Becker. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> My, what a splendid group of young men. Mm-hmm. Well, you boys ready? Ready. Yes, sir. Well, where's Charlie? Where's Charlie? Anybody see Mr. Wilkes? Where's Charlie Wilkes? All yourself together, Jack. I'm here. What's eating you? Oh, well, there you are. <laughs> you are, aren't you? Of course you are. <laughs> well, well, shall we start? Yeah, might as well. Heard him in, boss. Oh, uh, that'll be part of your job, Mr. Swan. What will? Well, you're an assistant director, you know. Well, who are all these other fellows? Oh, them? Uh, why, why, they're assistants, too. Did they put in $2,000, too? Why, uh, <laughs> no, no, not quite. They're not such big, uh, investors as you are, Mr. Swan. <laughs> oh, yeah, I get it. <laughs> now, Bob... Take a run down the road and stop traffic when we give you the signal. Places, everybody. I'll explain the scene to you. Ken, you come in from the right, sit down there on the wagon tongue. Miss Golden, you lean back against the wheel on Ken's lift. You cowboys, drape yourself around the two of them, and when I signal you, you start your song. Got it? Yes, okay. Okay for sounds. Okay. Roll on. Beat. Well, partner, we've had a tough day today, but it was worth it. Every doggone maverick in the outfit done rounded up and branded. Let's celebrate. <laughs> Let's have a song, man. Okay, Ken. Let's go, fellas. There's nowhere to go and there's nothing to do. I'm just a happy rolling cowboy. Let me ride that long trail down to the end where the skies are always blue. Hear my song as I ride along. I'm just a happy rolling cowboy. Turn the dark clouds out of the sky, keeping the heavens blue. I ain't got a wife to bother my life. I'm just a happy rolling cowboy. Let me make my bed where the barn would crowd beneath the skies of blue. Hear my song as I ride along, just a happy rolling cowboy. Turn the dark clouds out of the sky, keeping the heavens blue. I ain't got a 
I'm just a spending my time I'm just a happy rolling cowboy Let me sing my song till they call me home to the land beyond the blue Hear my song as I ride along I'm just a happy rolling cowboy Heard my daughter clouds out of the sky That's the stuff, boys. That's the sort of thing that makes the old West what she is today. Cut. Cut, Fanson. I'll wrap them up. Let's be getting back home. Looks like rain. Yeah, kind of does at that, don't it? You can can the Western twine, Joe. We're through. What did he say? Oh, just an expression of his, you know. We all have them out here. <laughs> Was that all there is to it? Why, certainly. I told you it was simple. Yeah, it is at that. Oh, Charlie! Yeah, what is it now? You better do it again. I didn't have the microphone plugged in. Next morning, as Lieutenant Swan arrives at the studio, still posing as the farm boy, awed by the big city, he walks into the outer office in time to hear a conversation coming through the open door of Becker's office. Becker, I'm behind in my room and board, and I, I wonder if you can't let me have some of the salary you owe me. Why, baby, tomorrow you can have it all. And here's a couple of bucks until then. Oh, thank you. I don't like to ask my grandmother for any more money. You stick with me, honey, and Grandma will be asking you for money. I'm not training you to be just a secretary, you know. You're going to be an actor. Oh, by the way, how are you going to make love on the screen if you don't get a little practice with your boss? Oh, please, Mr. Becker. I- I'd rather not talk about that. Well, you like me just a little bit, don't you, lady? Don't touch me, please. Oh, oh I'm please, not going to hurt you. Come on, baby. Come no, on. Be reasonable. Don't. Come no. on, big shot. Huh? What's that? How did you get in here? Your girl Friday left the door open. Well, get out of here. Now, is that any way to talk to an assistant director? You're no assistant director. You're just a... Police officer to you, Becker. Police? Yeah, ever hear of them? Why, you dirty double-crossing... Oh, back. take it easy, Becker. How many assistant directors have you got around here? Just one. Well, I met five yesterday. Well, that's a lie. Where do you keep the money you swindle these boys out of? I don't know what you're talking about. What did you have to pay those extra girls for posing as stars? You can't talk to me this way. Oh, I... Is that so? Say, have you got any contracts around here? Well, I know I have. I, uh, you... Yeah, just as I thought. Boy, you've really been cleaning up around here, haven't you? Come along, Becker. You're going to the station. All right, pal, but wait a minute. I haven't had any breakfast. I... I haven't even shaved yet. That's all right. The state of California is going to feed you for a long time. And where you're going, shaves don't matter. Move! In just a moment, you will hear Chief Davis. Friends, some motorists are just as gullible as Bob James and his pretty young wife when it comes to investing their hard-earned money in gasoline. The result is they are bunkoed out of the maximum efficiency and economical transportation they might have enjoyed. In the case of Rio Grande Cracked, however, you have this reassuring knowledge that police authorities already have investigated and tested this motor fuel, that Rio Grande Cracked is the overwhelming choice of city and county officials, that this great gasoline powers more public-serving police cars, ambulances, fire engines, and the automotive equipment of California state and federal governments wherever it is sold than any other brand. We invite you, too, to investigate and make your own tests, as tens of thousands like you have done. Feeling confident, you will join them in praising the gasoline that is first in public service. And now, Chief Davis. Becker, whose name obviously is fictitious, was indeed the guest of California for the next seven years. He was hailed into court, along with his fake actors and actresses, to act as witnesses, and was found guilty of grand theft bunco. He served his time in prison, that training school that has only one text. Crime does not pay. Thank you, Chief Davis. Los Angeles Police calling all cars. Attention all cars. Account laser broadcast 240 at Sunset and Beachwood. Suspect in this case sent to San Quentin. That's all. Dramatization was played by Lou Merrill.